So this in JavaScript is actually pretty easy to understand if you can get away from the complicated definitions and just watch it in action. And on my whiteboard, I have an object of a bearded dragon named Charmander. This was actually my childhood pet. I decided to make an object of him because it is pretty representative of this, not gonna lie. So the first thing that I did was I just created a property with his name in it. Obviously he needs to be identified by his name. That would be very rude if we did not call him by his, his actual name. And then down here, we actually have a git to get the first name. Now a junior programmer or somebody who's not very experienced with JavaScript, the first thing that you would probably do is just try to return the first name. If the property is within the object, can't you just return the first name? Can't you just return first name Charmander? And you would be incorrect. And if you try to do this, what's going to happen is that JavaScript is going to tell you it's undefined. There is nothing there because it can't actually access it. And this is where this comes along. When we have this, when we add actually this to this, this is actually correct. We will actually be able to get the first name of the bearded dragon and we will be able to achieve what we want. And the whole entire idea of this, if you could sum it up into just three words, it would be inside the object, inside the object. Whenever you are inside an object, the this is going to change. Now that's kind of confusing. And the best thing to do is to just step through every single scenario of this, watch it in action. And that's what we're going to do in VS Code. And I guarantee you, you will learn a lot. So let's go ahead, let's hop in VS Code and let's do some coding. So first things first, it would not be a this video without first just console logging this in the browser, not inside an object with no other code. So first thing is just to console log this and see what shows up inside the browser. And what's gonna show up inside the browser is the window object. And that may be like kind of strange, you know, wouldn't, you, wouldn't it just be an empty object? No, it's actually the window object because you are within the window. The window object is almost like the God object. It controls everything. And in a sense, you are actually within that object and you can manipulate it just as you would just post alert or you could do literally any of these functions, or you could do literally any of these methods right here and just call them because you are within the window object. But let's talk about functions. Let's talk about something more complicated. And this is going to be uh, just console logging within a function. So if you just log, let's just say this, and you're within a function, you just go here and you just log this, once again, and I need to actually run the function, I'm sorry. Once again, you're just going to get the window object. And that's because you are inside of a function. You are not inside of an object. And what's going to log is once again, going to be the window object. But let's also test another one. Let's test, I'm going to throw another curveball at you. So let's just say log expression and we'll say this and we will log another function. So we're going to go down here and then we are going to console.log this. So we're going to go console.log and then once again, we're going to log expression this. So if you go ahead, you log this expression, once again, you're going to get the window object. And if I even short, shortened this down and made this an arrow function, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, I'm just going to do it. Once again, you're going to get the window object because an arrow function inherits the this from the object that is within and you're, you don't have anything to inherit from. So once again, you're going to inherit from the actual window, but this is where things get interesting. And this is where the knowledge of actual, this is going to come into play. So we're going to go here and let's just say, I want to make some kind of utility. I want to make a utility to log an IP address. Just, uh, we're not going to actually log any IP address. It's just going to be just a rep. It's going to be a mocker, like a representation. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go up here. I'm actually going to get rid of this. I don't actually need this. And 
what I'm going to do is I am going to add an IP address. And this is where you could understand the usefulness of objects. So you could have your util right here and you can house all of your data inside of your object and it's not floating around all the place. That's kind of the reason that we actually have objects. And let's just say you're going to log the IP address and let's go into here and let's just say you want to log this IP address. And this is going to represent why we actually need this. So we'll go here, say IP address, and then we're going to go to this, or uh, let's just, without this, let's let's just see, let's try to see. And IntelliSense is going to try to correct it for us because it knows what's going to happen. I need to go down here and I need to actually log this. So I'll go util, we'll go log IP address, just like this. So you go util log IP address and you're going to get undefined because it can't see it. It doesn't know that it's there. It's an object. And then when you go to the, once you actually log it and you go to uh, this dot IP address, you're actually going to get the log. But let's go into here and let's just see what is actually logging or what is the actual value of this. And if you log the actual value of this, what you're going to get is an object. And that kind of goes back to what I said. Whenever you think of this and you wonder when uh, this is actually going to change, just think inside an object. Whenever you are inside of, inside of an object, this is going to change. And the whole entire idea of this is so that you know which IP address you're trying to access. Another instance would be, what if you had an I, and this is actually very common, what if you had an IP address up here and it tried to lock it outside of it? So if I went to out here and I said IP address just like this, watch what happens. You would actually be able to log the outside IP address and it would be a conflict. It would be something that you would not want to do because you want to log the data that's within your object because that is the logical representation of it. And that is another reason that we have this so that you're not conflicting with outside variables. And that pretty much is the whole entire gist of this. Another thing is that you need to be actually cognizant of how functions or arrow functions work with this. And I actually have a whole entire video on that. And I will leave a link down in the description for that in case you want to learn a very important aspect of this. And that's how it works with arrow functions. Anyways, that's going to be my video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.